Yirmiyahu was a prophet, was a good chaver of mine. Never understood a single word he said, but we helped him to drink his yin. And we always have some mighty fine yin. Sementim chadli olam, kol ayil adim now. Simcha to the donkey moon. Welcome to the Haftarah Plethora video podcast, where we bring joy to the world by talking about the prophets and their writings that we read for the Haftarah, or what we prefer to call profiteer- profiteering. Hey man, that's really bad. But since this is an episode for Pesach, I think I'll just pass over that one. Oh, and now it's my turn to groan. But Rick, today we have another special episode as we talk about the Haftarah for the second day of Passover one of the five special haftarot for the Passover holiday, but one that's only read in the diaspora, since in Israel, the second day of the holiday is not celebrated as a Chag, but only as a day of Chol HaMoed. I guess you could say that it's a holy day and not a holy day. I think that I better get on with the introduction before we lose all of our viewers. I'm Larry Herman, drinking some very fine wine, and talking Haftarah with my very good Haver, the king of cantillation, and a man who's really, really happy about his Aztecs making it to the final four, Rick Muller. Rick, are you all ready for Pesach? Getting there. How about you? Not even close, since we're recording this about a week and a half ahead of the holiday. But I'll be ready when it gets here. The house will be free of chametz, the kitchen transformed, the utensils all kosher for Pesach. I'll have made my gefilte fish, and Diane will have an assortment of Pesach delicacies ready for the Seder and the week, and I will have reviewed my Haggadah and prepared my introductory Seder remarks. Holy cow, you must start your preparations like right after Purim. Not quite that early, but we do get going early. How do you have time for anything else, like your granddaughter Millie? Rick, I always have time for Millie, but thanks to that, for another lead-in to another episode of It's Millie Time. We celebrated Millie's second birthday with a party. Her parents arranged a petting zoo for the kids and for the adults. Looks like Millie was a little shy about mixing with the animals. Not for long. She went in by herself and was joined by her uncle Reuben. And then her father Aaron. And then her mother Aaron Beth. Hey, what's that animal that she's petting? She doesn't look too comfortable with it. Rick, that's a hedgehog. Kind of like a little porcupine, but with but its bristles aren't sharp. But Millie did seem happier cutting the cake with her great-grandfather, Sonny, and her mom and dad. And she looks real happy with her new tricycle. Oh yeah, real happy. She took that thing out for a spin right away. Or rather, she took it in for a spin since she rode it all around the house. But Rick, it's time for us to get back to the Haftarah for the second day of Passover. As I was saying, this is strictly a diaspora thing since they don't observe Yom Tov Sheni in Israel. And neither do you. That's true, but I will tell you that I kind of wish that the sages had selected this reading from the second book of Kings as the reading for the first day of Pesach, because I find it so meaningful. Maybe you should observe the second day then. Let's leave that matter to me and my rabbi. But let me explain why I find the Haftarah so meaningful. By all means. As I've often noted, The sages like to select the Haftarah reading to link it to the Parsha, or in the case of special days, to the theme of the day. So it's not surprising that the Haftarah for both the first and the second day of Pesach refer to the Paschal sacrifice. The Haftarah for the first day includes a single verse that refers refers to the first such sacrifice after Bnei Yisrael entered the land under the leadership of Joshua. The reference seems to be almost incidental and without any clear moral message. But the Haftarah for the second day 
that we read today recounts in somewhat abridged form the story of King Josiah's discovery of the Scroll of the Covenant, the purification of the temple following years of idol worship, and Josiah's restoring monotheism to the kingdom of Judea. This is one of the most important historical and theological stories of the biblical era. Of course it is, but why do you find it so meaningful? Rick, for once, I'll be the one to make reference to the commentary in the Eitz Chaim Chumash on page 1304, where it explains the connection of the Haftarah to the calendar. It says, by designating this Haftarah for the recitation on Pesach, the sages teach that the Pesach liberation must be achieved and reconfirmed again and again. I really like the idea, because that's also the theme of the Seder, as we famously recite each year at the beginning of the Seder, in each and every generation, each Jew is obligated to see themselves as if they personally left Egypt. And the Lubavitcher Rebbe expanded the commandment to, in each and every generation, and even every day, a Jew must see himself as if he had been, that day, liberated from Egypt. Great stuff. How about if I liberate myself to talk about the trope? Dainu, what have you got for us, Rick? Well, I see two pazers. That's what I've got. Well, if you've got two pazers, and I know you're a happy camper, then I've got seven Kadmava Azlas, two Azla Gerishes, and four Gershaims, so I'm pretty happy myself. Rick, before you start, let's divide the chanting into two parts. The first nine verses of the Haftarah describe how King Josiah read the entire scroll of the covenant to all the people of Judea and committed himself and the people to fulfill its commandments. He then cleansed the temple and local shrines of idolaters. The second part of the Haftarah jumps to verses 21 through 25, which describe the reinstatement of the Paschal sacrifice. Perfect. So let me talk about the trope in the first part, which include the two pazers that emphasize the two most important ideas in the Haftorah, the temple and the king. The first pazer, right at the beginning, occurs in the second verse in the phrase, Vaya'ah HaMelech Beit Adonai. This dramatizes King Josiah going up to the temple, literally the house of God. This is the focus of Josiah's reestablishment of mitzvah-centered monotheism. The trope also emphasized that all the inhabit inhabitants of Judea and Jerusalem went up with him, using your favorite Kadma Azla. Bechol ish Yehuda, bechol Yoshve Yerushalayim, dramatizing everybody. Rick, I find it interesting that in the third verse, which describes the commitment of the people to observing the commandments, that we have words that are reminiscent of the Shema, b'chol lev u'v'chol nefesh. Yep, yep, we do. And then in verse 4, we have the second pause there, on HaMelech, after Vayetzav, the Munach there. It's all about Josiah and his commitment and leadership. Here he's commanding the priests to rid the temple of idolatry and to destroy all the idols by burning the pagan objects in the Kidron Valley and scattering the ashes north in Bethel, Josiah symbolically is desecrating the pagan holy places, and it's also a polemic against the former northern kingdom. This is crucial to rid the people of their pagan ways. And those pagan ways included some pretty graphic stuff. Yes, it did. In addition to the worshiping of the Canaanite god Baal, and the sun, and the moon, and the stars, described in verse 6, in the next verse, we're told that Josiah tore down the huts for the male prostitution that were erected in the courtyard of the temple. This is not a trope thing, but notice the verse also includes Asher Hanashim, or Goat Sham Batim Lashera. This is translated as the place that the women wove coverings for Asherah which sounds innocent enough, but Yoshiahu intervened. So if you add a Yud for Yoshiahu, the or goat turns into or giot, the word for orgies, revealing that the entire verse is talking about 
all the licentious activity that was going on in and around the temple, the men and the women. Wow, what a drush. Rick, I think that we sufficiently covered the narrative for the first nine verses. It's time to chant. Our viewers can follow along with the text on the screen provided by Norm Gar, or starting at page 1304 in the Eitz Chaim Chumash. But first, the bracha, please. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitschanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. Vayishlach HaMelech Vayasfu Elav Kozikne Yehuda Virushalayim Vayal HaMelech Beit Adonai Bechol Ish Yehuda Bechol Yoshve Yerushalayim Ito Bechoanim Bechanvim Bechol Ha'am Lamikaton Bechad Gadol Bechikra Beoznehem Echol Divrei Sefer Habrit Hanimtza Bevet Adonai Vaya Amod Hamelech Al Ha Amod Vayichrot Et Habrit Lifne Adonai Lalechet Achar Adonai Belishmor Mitzvotav Vet Eidotav Vet Chukotav Vecholev Uvechol Nefesh Lehakim Et Divrei Habrit Hazot Haketuvim Al Hasefer Hazeh Vaya Amor Kolam Babrit Vayetzav HaMelech Et Chilkiyahu HaKohen HaGadol Vet Kohane HaMishneh Vet Shomrei HaSaf Lehotzi Mechal Adonai Et Kol HaKelim Asuim la ba al vela ashera u le khol sva hashamaim va yisrafem me khutz lirushalaim bishad mohot kidron benasa et afaram bet el bishbit et hakmari Asher not no Malche Yehuda Vayikater Baba Mot Beare Yehuda Umasibe Yerushalayim Vet Hamakatrim Laba Al Lashemesh Vilayareach Vila Mazalot Ulecho Svahashemayim Vayotse et ha-shera mi beit Adonai mi chutz l'rushalayim el nachal kidron vayisrof otach benachal kidron vayadek le'afar vayashlech et afarach al kever b'nei ha'am Vayitotz et batei hakdeshim asher bevet Adonai asher hanashim orgot sham batim lashera vayave et kol hakohanim meare Yehuda vayitame. Et am bamot asher kitru shama hakohanim mi geva ad be'er shava v'natatz 
את במות השערים. אשר פתח שער יהושע שר העיר, אשר על שמאל איש בשער העיר. אך לא יעלו כהני הבמות אל מזבח אדוני בירושלים, כי אם אוכלו מצות בתוך אחיהם. Rick, beautifully read as always. Now we jump to verse 21. What about the verses in between? Rick, verses 10 through 20 provide more detail about what Josiah did to rid the country of paganism. What I find interesting about those verses is that they give all the credit to Josiah. He is the one responsible for every act of cleansing, from defiling the pagan temples to doing away with the horses used in pagan rituals, from tearing down idolatrous altars to burning shrines, from destroying the graves of the idolaters to slaying the corrupt priests on their pagan altars. All these acts are attributed to Josiah himself. Perhaps the sages, knowing that people would be tired from two nights of Seder, decided to shorten the story. Excellent idea. I wish that they had done so more often. Okay, so as you already explained, these last five verses describe the king's commandment to the people to offer the paschal sacrifice in accordance with the commandments, presumably found in the discovered text, Deuteronomy. This is emphasized with the Zakef Gadol, towards the end of verse 21. Kakatu al sefer habrit hazeh as written in the scroll of the covenant. And we also know that Josiah made sure that the sacrifice was done in the correct way. And how do we know that? Because we have a gershaim on the word na'asa which means was done. The entire phrase is Naasa Apesach, dramatizing that Haze Ladonai Birushalayim. This Passover sacrifice to Adonai was done in Jerusalem. A clear message that we should observe Pesach in the correct way. Um, is that the Ashkenazi correct way or the Sephardi correct way? Well, I do eat Kitniyot. It's all good, as long as it's tasty. Never mind. We don't offer sacrifices any longer anyway, but as you said earlier, we do try to imagine that we were part of the Passover story. Rick, two quick comments about the last two verses. In verse 24, we're told that Josiah rid, got rid of a bunch of deplorables. Right. The verse starts, Begam et ovot et yidonim. Bet ha-trafim, bet ha-gilulim, bet kol ha These terms generally refer to people who used to call up the spirits of the dead using family idols and bones of animals, other fetishes. The trope are pretty dramatic. These were all things that were forbidden in the book that Josiah just found, which many commentators and scholars think is the book of Deuteronomy. It's difficult to get people to abandon superstitions and false beliefs. Don't we know it? Perhaps that's why Yoshiahu was such a great king. But what's your other point? Just that. Josiah was truly a great king. And that's what the last verse tells us. Oh, you mean, Vechamohu lo hayalafanav melech. Exactly. There was no king like him before. And remember how I mentioned that back in verse 3, we had an echo of the Shema? Here in verse 25, we have an even more complete reminder of the Shema. Yes, we do. Asher shav el Adonai v'chol levavo u'v'chol nafsho u'v'chol me'odo. Who turned back to Adonai with all of his heart all of his soul, and all of his might. Rick, time to chant the last five verses of the Haftarah for the second day of Pesach. <laughs> 
Bayitzav HaMelech Ekol Ha'am Lemor Asu Fesach L'Adonai Elohechem Kakatuv Al Sefer Habrit Hazeh Kilo Na'asa Kapesach Hazeh Mimei Hashofatim Asher Shaftu Et Yisrael Bechol Yemei Mache Yisrael Umache Yehuda Ki Im Bishmone Esre Shana La Melech Yoshiahu Na asa ha pesach haze la donai birushalayim vegam et ha ovot vet ha yidonim vet ha trafim vet ha gilulim vet kolashikutsim asher nir u. Be'eretz Yehuda u'viru shalayim be'er Yoshiahu leman akim et divrei haTorah haktuvim al hasefer asher matzah chilkiyahu hakohen beit Adonai. Vechamohu lo hayal fanav melech asher shav eladonai bechol levavo ubechol nafsho ubechol meodo kechol torat Moshe veacharav lo kam kamohu. You know, I think the Haftorah ends on a sad note. How so? Be'acharav lo kam kamohu. And after him, nor did any arise like him. I'm thinking that we need more Josiahs nowadays. Me too. As always, thanks to Norm Gar for all the beautiful graphics, music, text, and editing. Don't forget to write us with your thoughts and comments. Our emails are below. And if you like our video podcast, Please forward the link to your friends and family. Please check out our new episode for Shabbat Cholamoid Pesach. We get to discuss and chant one of the most famous passages in the Bible. Them bones. I'm hearing a song. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Yeah. Let's just wish the people a Chag Sameach for now. Chag Kasher V'Sameach. Chag Sameach. Bye-bye. Dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. I hear. The word of the Lord.